Hi guys, welcome back to Axis and Allies the Garrison. This is Detroit coming to you once again from uh, the bunker here in Rochelle Park, New Jersey. Okay, so this is Axis and Allies the Garrison. All right, guys, uh, just before I go ahead and review or recap uh, the video for uh, Russia that is being led by Field Marshal Wartorn, I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, what is it, a, a a chat group that I started in WhatsApp. Okay, WhatsApp is a social media application that allows for people to build a community and for people to network and interact uh, and communicate and hopefully uh, develop the ability to be able to uh, network and hopefully uh, uh, be able to plan for games in the future okay that that's the idea behind the whatsapp application chat that i started okay so i i i'm going to send an invitation a general invitation to the community out there of those individuals who are still out there who have not uh uh yet or who are not yet part of the group but who, that may have an interest uh and who may want to uh, uh reach out and be part of this group if you guys are interested and you're willing to join please send me a message uh, on the mm -hmm. bottom of uh, your screen there and your comments, uh, get, send me your email and I'll send you an invitation to actually an email with your phone number included. This way I can reach out to you and send you an invitation to the WhatsApp chat that we started. We have a lot of uh, influential members in this particular chat. Okay, uh, if you guys are interested, again, let me know and I'll forward you an invitation. Okay, it's a great way to network. It's a great way to uh, uh, reach out to to find individuals who may be willing to play with you. I know that for a lot of members in the community, that's an issue. Finding other people that are like-minded who have a desire to play this game, okay? Very difficult at times. Some, some of us live in areas where it's just very hard to find people to play with. <clears throat> so, if, if you have an interest in, in uh, Axis and Allies and an interest in playing uh, uh, or finding opponents to play with, Reach out to me. Maybe I could uh, 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 find somebody for you in this chat, okay? All right, guys. So what do we have today? Well, today is uh, Russia's turn. Remember, it's round three. Russia is going, and it's under the command of uh, Field Marshal Wartorn, who will respond to the very aggressive actions taken by the Germans. The Germans have launched a full-fledged uh, Operation Barbarossa and are definitely making inroads into Germany and other areas of the European map, which includes Gibraltar, okay, and uh, potentially even still, maybe even the sea line uh, could, could potentially still be on, uh, on uh, up ahead in the horizon. So guys, sit tight and let me know uh, what you guys think uh, once the episode is uh, uh, done, all right, completed. Sit tight and enjoy the show, guys. All right, this is what we have. Definitely a full-fledged Operation Barbarossa. Uh, during Germany's last turn, the Germans were able to land an Archangel uh, by utilizing their naval assets. They performed an amphibious landing that was uh, backed up or assisted by a, an airborne landing. Okay, the Germans also took over Leningrad and other parts of the Eastern Front as well. Okay, so definitely very aggressive. Germans also uh, took Gibraltar, okay, in the Mediterranean. So these are all the actions that the Germans are currently undertaking all the operations as for the USSR well right now the the all resistance up in the northern front has basically collapsed the Russians though have been able to fortify Bryansk they have their four infantry four artillery divisions two mech uh, two mech infantry two armored divisions two uh, fighter squadrons and one ta uh, bomber uh, one uh, tactical bomber squadron defending Bryansk I guess this will be the center of uh of uh, what is it? Uh, what uh, center for the Russians to be able to, to counterattack the German offense? Okay, let's see how that works out for the Russians. Also, the Russians have a very strong presence in the Far East, uh, in one of the Mongolian uh, territories. I forget the name. Okay, they have up to twenty infantry, four light uh, armored divisions, and two triple A's. So definitely, the Japanese have to reckon. They have to consider the opposition here you know, the forces are arrayed against them so definitely gi joe who is the commander uh, generalissimo of japan of the japanese empire has to deal with this uh menacing threat coming from the russians okay 
But I'm sure that if uh, War Torn had a choice, he'd rather have these forces up in the east, in the west, actually. But uh, since he doesn't, he has no choice but to have him here and array uh, uh, them against the Japanese. All right, guys. I'm going to recap the, the order of battle, okay? And uh, sit tight for that. I'll be back shortly. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, before we go through the order of battle, there's a couple of uh, things that we have to do. One amongst them is we got to do a little bit of housekeeping, and also we have to go through uh, War Torn's uh, purchases that he made. But let's start with the housekeeping first, okay? All right, uh, there's a, there was an error that uh, Sire of Blood made here in his turn uh, during Germany, during Germany's moves. He uh, took one infantry, an additional infantry from... Uh, that was actually in Finland, and he mistakenly moved it twice from Finland to uh, Leningrad. That was an illegal move, which he could not do. This infantry can only move one space, and it'll go now into Karelia. All right, so that's a correction that needs to be made. Okay, a second mistake that was made was actually made uh, during Italy's turn by VK Cowboy. Uh, we didn't realize it at the time, but during his turn, VK Cowboy took Yugoslavia. That being the case, there was no way that he could railroad his uh, uh, artillery piece and his AAA that he brought over from southern uh, France and uh, uh, northern Italy. So the AAA will go back to northern Italy and the artillery will go back to southern France okay so that's a correction and it's all due because of the fact that during his combat movements he recently took Yugoslavia and according to the rules if you take a territory you cannot railroad in any units in or through that particular territory that was just taken also another mistake that was made it was a positioning issue uh initially uh Sire Blood had landed his single infantry into Libya uh, that being the case, though, he couldn't do it because in order to place one uh, uh, airborne land, uh, a unit that has been brought in, there has to be already one ground unit on, in the, on the land. So having said that, that ground unit instead will be placed on Tunisia and the bomber itself will be landed in Tunisia as well. Okay, so that's it for the housekeeping, guys. All right, so let's go into um, War Torn's purchases, all right? So for his technology, he... Roll the one, which is the amount that he's got to pay. All right, his technology is here. He purchased 10 infantry and one artillery division. And he gets to carry over one IPC for the next round. Okay, now let's uh, review his combat movements. Let's go to the Far East first. <clears throat> All right. Uh, one artillery goes into Siberia from Soviet Far East. This is the artillery that... Um, the Soviets get through the American land lease, okay? So uh, the, the, the Russians received one artillery piece from the United States through land lease. Okay, so that's the declared movement, an attack. Okay, this armored uh, light armor unit is blitzing from this Mongolian territory, okay? Blitzing through the Amur and into North Korea, into Korea, all right? Third uh, battle. Okay, this uh, light armor unit comes also from, um, I can't pronounce the name, but it, it moves one and two. It, walk, it basically just rolls into Shahar. And then an additional two light, uh, light armor units come in from the same territory and move one and two and attack the single defending Japanese infantry division defending that Chinese territory that is Japanese occupied. So these are the attacks. Definitely... You can see that War Torn is definitely launching a, an offensive, an offense against the Japanese, putting even more pressure on GI Joe and Imperial Japanese forces uh, in China and uh, Northeast uh, China to, uh, in general. Okay, let's go to the Eastern Front now. <clears throat> All right, so. In Belarus, you have two infantry, one fighter, okay, coming over from Bryansk. Okay, that fighter has three left in its, in its uh, gas tank. 
Okay, in Western Ukraine, you have an, an additional two infantry divisions supported by one tactical bomber, also coming from Bryansk. Okay, that tactical fighter or bomber has three movements left in its gas tank. All right, uh, Ukraine. Again, you have two infantry divisions, Russian, supported by one air wing of the Russian Air Force with three left on its movement uh, gauge. And those are the three battles that are being declared by Wartorn and his Russians. Okay. To me, it seems like uh, all the battles fought by the Russians are doable. The Russians should take their objectives. But then again, you plan and then you hope that everything goes the way you want it to. All right, guys, we'll come back shortly with the results of the battle. All right, guys, uh, we're back. Uh, the order of battle uh, just took place. Uh, I would say that very successful uh, turn for the Russians. Okay, uh, finally, War Torn has some uh, good news. Okay, so uh, the easy battles first up in the in the Far East. Uh, the battle here in uh, in Siberia was an easy one. It was just a walk in for that single infantry division. Same for the light uh, armored unit that just blitzed through the Amur and Korea, as well as for the uh, light armor that ran through Shahar. The battle here that was fought uh, against the one Japanese infantry division at Sui Yuyan was successful. The Russians in the Far East did not sustain any casualties whatsoever. Good for the Russians. About time to have some good news. All right, let's go to the Eastern Front. All right, up in the North. Uh, you have uh, the battle for Belarus. The Russians and Germans each sustained one casualty uh, on their on each side, so uh, it was a fair exchange. The Russians succeeded in their objective of taking Belarus. Same results in uh, Western Ukraine. Each side lost one infantry division. Uh, victory for the Russians. All right, and one hundred percent victory here for the Russians in Ukraine. The Russians did not sustain any casualties at all, and the Germans sustained one casualty here. All right, so that's it for the order of battle. Now let's go uh, ahead with the non-combat movements. All right, let's go ahead with the non-combat movements for the Russians, the USSR. All right, so here we go. The German, the Russian army that was here, uh, decided to fall back into two separate territories, into Rostov, which is south, and the Russian territory in Moscow uh, to the uh, east. Okay, so to Rostov, uh, Wartorn decided to pull back four, four uh, uh, artillery pieces okay, into Rostov. The remainder of the forces that were in Bryansk went to Russia, with the exception of one infantry division, which remained there. Okay, um, in the far that's about it over here in, in the on the eastern front in the far east, the Russian army, the massive Russian army that was in the in uh, in the Mongolian uh, uh, province here, uh, moved east and and moved into the Amur. That's twenty infantry and two triple A's. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead with uh, the placement of units. Okay. So we're going to place these three units into Rostov. So we have a minor industrial complex. So here you're going to have six artillery divisions company with two infantry divisions and two triple A's. Okay. Let's take these three infantry divisions are going to be placed in the Minor industrial complex in Bryansk. That's what you have here. All right. And in Russia, we're going to place the remaining five infantry that um, War Torn purchased. All right. So now for his land lease from the United States, uh, War Torn rolled a six. A six is nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's what uh, the Russians are getting. From the United States. So the six means that the lend lease supplies being sent from the United States to Russia were lost at sea. 
That means that some lone Japanese submarine somewhere in the Pacific sunk an American uh, Liberty transport ship bringing in supplies to the Russians. According to War Torn, uh, the Russians should be at 37 IPCs and that's how much uh, they're collecting this turnaround. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, episode. Uh, Russia's turns are complete. War Torn had a very successful round for a change. We like what we saw here. Uh, so now it is Japan's turn. What will G.I. Joe do in the Pacific? He's definitely feeling the pressure. The Japanese have to contend and deal with the strong Russian army in the Amur. Okay, so they definitely have to uh, deal with that. Also, the Japanese are facing a smaller combined allied army of Chinese and British infantry in Yunnan. However, the Japanese have a very, very strong air force. Unfortunately for the Japanese, they're lacking in ground units. They do not have sufficient infantry to seriously hurt the allies on all fronts. Or will they go for, or will G.I. Joe, the Japanese, go for the Philippines? We shall see what happens. All right, guys, let's wait, and we shall find out in, in the next turn when G.I. Joe finally goes with his Japanese. Guys, as always, we hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, YouTube, of the YouTube Wars. And until next time, and don't forget to, as Dutch likes to say, bunker down and play. We shall be back.